I just poured off the liquid. Mm -hmm. Nice. Ooh, that's, that's a really nice yellow. It is. That's pretty. Awesome. And you already did the other one as well. I did. And that's kind of a nice kind of like orange. A pinky, orangey brown. <laughs> that turned out really well. Yeah, cool. I like it a lot. Nice. Now I got to just hang it to dry. Very good. fabric you're going to use how much of different chemicals you need to mordant or prep the fabric so this is going to help the color adhere and you can use things like soy milk and then there's other like usually it's like tin and different metals but these are the most common especially this which is also known as alum the most common ones that can help to adhere it unless you're using things like i think avocados and cabbages and a couple other things you don't need that chemical so we will do 10% and you can mix this up, but I've been doing 10% of alum with about 5% per gram of fabric and we'll mix that in with boiling water and then we'll put it in hot but not boiling water with the fabric for 45 minutes. Is there a certain ratio of ingredients to fabric? So I think they say one to one, but I've been just gathering a bunch of stuff and like trying to see how much we get mm -hmm. and what color it makes. So it's been kind of experimentation yeah but it's fun experiments and yeah. you can play with how deep you want the color mm -hmm. yep okay and you... we also have a pot yep we have our dye pot so they recommend specifically for these chemical type things that you use a pot that's not going to be used for food so we'll use this one but then the plants we're using the avocado stuff can all go in food safe pots perfect to do natural fabric dyeing you want to use a plant or animal based fabric so you don't want any polyester. I mean, you can try, but it won't adhere as well. So cotton and wool and linen, I think are the most common ones people use. Okay, 140. So we have like 270-ish. We'll do 280. 28 grams. You can round up. I don't think it's mm -hmm. that important. And then we'll do 14 grams, 15 grams of the green tartar. Okay. It's just when you add hot water to this, we will do it outside because they say some of these people can get like a response. 27. Yeah, 27, 28. Okay. <laughs> right on it. Okay, to see. Okay, so we will take that outside with us and then we're going to put hot but not boiling water in this. Okay, so we'll take those inside, those, and go more than. Oh, and the fabric. That would help. You're going to add it's no set amount of water to this is just all for weight. So we're gonna just add enough of that hot water to that and mix it up as you go. Does it need to be a paste or? It should be dissolved. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that goes in here. All right. And then, okay. And then this goes in, so you wanna kinda open it up as you're putting it in and submerge the fabric so all of it gets in contact with this water. And it's fine for your hands, so that should shouldn't okay. do anything bad. Done, you can stick a lid on. Set a timer for 45 minutes and go right. start the dye. Right. Do I need to put water in the pot then? Yes. I would, let's do like halfway. Okay. Let's see. So, yeah. this stuff, but that's supposed to dye like a green yellow. These, I honestly, some of the stuff, I don't know oh, about me. Like yeah, well, and dandelions also give yellow color. But we can go look at the backyard. In my yeah, head. do we want to wander around a little bit and yeah. see if we find any more? Sure. I think anything that we think would add a yellow or yellow green color, we can just combine it all. Mm -hmm. 
We're back. You want a glove? Oh, you guys, you can keep them. I'm good. You coming to help? You got to do the foraging. You ready? I mean, I think anything yellow, if you think it's done and we want to try to put it in and try, if you can. Yeah. But this is what I was talking about. This is like the... Oh. What color were these when they were... Like they were bright yellow. Do we want to try to add a couple? Sure. We can. Oh, no, actually, there are some rose hips still. They're just kind of oh, watery. Huge ones. Actually, they're dried. I don't know if that matters. I don't know if it matters. Do you want to put them in? They might give more of a pink color. Yeah, I'll try it. It's a rosebud. This is the perfect, like, low state way to test it out. Yes. Yeah. A little bit of each one that we're putting in. So we're gonna do raspberry succulents. Let's find a fat rose hip. Rose hip mm -hmm. and then a rose. So that's what we're gonna try to do for the pink one. Cool. For the yellow green one, it's mainly that what was it? Horsetail, dandelion, and the tansies, plus a couple of miscellaneous yellow flowers. It's definitely the boiling. Now we just make weeds for dinner? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weed this is stew. Dinner. Yum. Flour and weed stew. Yard waste. Yeah, yard waste stew. Yay, that's so nice. Mm. Yep, little one. And then we can probably turn it down a little bit lower and we'll leave it for about an hour and we can serve occasionally okay. and see what color we get. And then we'll go out and get the fabric on a, the warden's back because it's been about three minutes. Okay. Yep. And then we'll do new hour. Hour-ish. We'll see what color we got. There's an hour button. Was, was there any immediate? Oh. Like, oh wow. So that's just after a couple minutes. So it's hard to tell, like liquid color, what it'll be on fabric and if the fabric will take. So but we definitely, yeah, it'll smell kind of odd. But it'll definitely start to turn and you know that there's color. Nice. Yeah. This one I'm very curious about because I have no idea what color it's going to make. So we're going to pour the water in there. And then yes, so you want to, and we'll capture all of the liquid in the pot, and then we're going to take out the plant materials. Leave it at least 24 hours. And then you can either um, just leave it in the hot liquid with the fabric mm -hmm. and let it go, or you can let it simmer for an hour in that dyeing liquid, which I would maybe recommend just because we don't know what color this will bring. And then you can take it off the heat, set it aside, and just leave it for a good 24 hours. Leave it at least 24 hours, squeeze all the excess out, and then if you can hang and dry it somewhere, you'll see what the color has. Ooh, it's definitely yellow. Mm -hmm. So we'll add that one, this one, and then, so if you want to use like a spoon or something, okay. uh, and just slowly put it in, Kind of trailing so that you try to make sure every piece of the fabric touches the dye and it's not like in a tight pot. Okay. It's looking definitely yellow. Mm -hmm. Still a pale yellow, but. Kind of like a pinkish orangey brown. I just poured off the liquid. Mm -hmm. Nice. Ooh, that's, that's a really nice yellow. It's kind of a nice kind of like orange. A pinky orangey brown. 
That turned out really well. Yeah, cool. I like it a lot. Nice. Now I gotta just hang it to dry. Very good. Okay, so it's what, a couple days after and the fabrics are finally dry. Mm -hmm. So how do they turn out? I, I think they turned out really well. I mean, that's kind of the fun thing about these natural dyes is that you're never totally sure what color you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the way to go into it is if you have a, an expectation for the color, you may get disappointed. Um, but if you're going into it, go, just wondering what it's gonna turn out as, I think it can be really fun. Uh, I am gonna label these little tester cloths um, and also a label that I used alum um, just so I know if I want to re replicate or try to get close to that color again I know how I did it and with what what things I used mm -hmm. and I just want to say a huge thank you to Erin for showing me how to do this um, this is so much fun and I can definitely see myself doing this more so the reason I wanted to try these natural dyes is because uh, I have a project in mind for them, which is to create a quilted pillow for our living room, just to sort of tie in some of the colors from our living room and just to have a comfy pillow for one of our chairs that currently doesn't have one. And so um, I'm really excited to, to use these later for that project. I will have to do a few more dyes um, to just get a couple more colors. So if any of you guys know of any other ways to do natural dyeing um, or specific plants or um, ingredients, let us know in the comments because I would love to try a couple of different ways as well. Thank you all for watching. Please like and comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications when new videos drop. Bye everyone. To eat, like, do you want to? We pick these ones, so, so we'll that's... leave Hunter's raspberry bushes. Yes, he loves raspberries so much. We got these big old mushrooms back here. I'm like, huh, those are cool. I don't know if I've ever seen any like that. Yeah, they're huge. I don't know what they are. It'll be really interesting to find out. <laughs>